Hey guys, as you know, there's a virtual modular synth for CV signals in your Droid Master. Its modules are called circuits and they are connected to each other with internal cables. I want to talk about these cables today. How these cables look like I already showed in the introduction video. One difference to a real cable is that these cables have names for better readability of your patch. And you don't need multiples in the droid because a cable is always a mult and can be connected to any number of inputs. So in the example from the intro we just could add a second envelope and use the same cable. Of course it would make no sense to send several outputs into a cable. That would basically be a short circuit and it would not be clear which signal should flow through the cable. In summary, each cable must be connected to exactly one output and at least one input. The status bar has a cable indicator that shows you whether everything is okay with the cable. Just move over the cable and it will become active. You always see the output to which the cable is connected on the left and the inputs on the right. You can also click on it to jump to all ends of the cable one after the other. This is the same as the question mark key. But now I want to show you how to elegantly draw new cables. There are several ways. First I load a patch that we can play around with. it. I've already shown you the first way in the introduction. You select start creating internal cable, then move to the destination and press enter. You will be asked for a name. Cable names may contain digits, letters and underscores. No spaces. Those will be replaced automatically by underscores. If you want to create another connection, just do the same on a cell where there is already a cable. When the input and output are both on the screen, you can move the cursor to one cell, hold the ALT key and click the mouse on the other. This will immediately create a cable with the default name. You can then rename that cable using rename internal cable. If a cell already contains a cable, the name will be taken over. Of course you can also copy and paste the content of a cell, the cable, somewhere else. If you have ever written patches with a text editor, you surely know that cables in the droid.ini file start with an underscore. Knowing that, you can create a new cable or connect to an existing one simply by typing an underscore followed by the cable name. It will be capitalized automatically, don't be surprised. The most general way to create a new cable or to connect to an existing one is to simply press enter. This will bring up this window. In the right area you see the list of all cables that already exist. In the text field above you can either enter name or search for existing cables. Or you just click on one in the list below. If you are working on a larger patch it will happen that you copy a large part of it, maybe a whole section, maybe because your sequencer should get a second voice. For a demonstration I load my sequencer patch from my live system. I created my sequencer patch in a way that each voice has a fixed prefix in the cable name, for example tb underscore for tenobase. Cables of global meaning, for example clock, do not have that prefix. So now let's duplicate the whole section tb in order to get a new voice. As you can see here we get some new warning messages about cables that have more than one output. So we need to fix that. For this, and this is important, I first select all circuits which I just copied. This is easy here because this is a whole new section and select all selects all circuits in this section. Then I call rewrite cable names. And now I can simply replace the prefix tp underscore for example with xy underscore. So all cables get a new name except of course those without a prefix like root. And that's exactly what I want. By the way, if you want to know later which value actually flows through which cable, have a look at the video about the status dumps. And now I have one last thing. You can make cable names as long as you want, but the length of a line in the patch is limited to 63 characters. So don't overdo it. And there's one more limitation. A patch can be no more than 64,000 characters. Just hover over the memory indicator and the status bar to see how big your patch currently is. Long cable names can inflate that quite a bit. But since Forge 1.1 there's a simple solution. In the preferences there's the setting rename patch cables. If this is active the Forge gives all cables very short names just before it activates the patch or copies it to the SD card. This has the disadvantage that you can recognize anything when you look at the patch on the SD card. 
but otherwise everything works fine and even the status dump in the forge is displayed correctly. For this, the forge simply calculates the renaming backwards again. So that's it for today. I hope you found something interesting and we'll see each other again in the next video.